In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front glass on the iPad 6th Gen or the iPad 9.7. Begin by turning the device off if you can, and then we're going to place it on the heat mat for the next five minutes. I've got my heat mat set to 85 degrees C. You can, however, use a heat gun or a hairdryer to achieve the same effect but the heat mat will distribute heat much more evenly, doing a better job. For the worst damage is over here. I'm going to cut away some of these uh, some of these shards of glass, and I'm hoping at this point that I can get hold of a bit of the adhesive so that I can pull it through, but I'm not sure I'll be able to with this one. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. No, it's not letting me get hold of it like that. So instead, I'm going to take a single-sided razor blade, and I'm going to create a, a gap just between the edge of the glass and the metal chassis. Once I've got a little gap in it like that, then I'm gonna get a plastic guitar pick or a plastic opening pick. And then I'm gonna start sliding it in that gap, only inserting it a few millimeters at a time. I mean, it's snapping a little bit more where it was cracked there, but whenever it cracks like that, we can add the razor blade again, lift it up we're just going to push through that bit. The hardest bit about this job is removing it. And in all honesty, I've not heated this one up enough. And I probably should have left it another few minutes on the heat mat. Once we've got this edge removed like that, I'm going to continue working my way along the bottom. But on this bit, the adhesive is a lot thicker, so I'm gonna add some isopropyl alcohol on there as well. And I'm gonna put some on the pick itself, just to help cut through the thicker adhesive on this bottom edge. I'm gonna continue sort of working through, just sort of cutting through the adhesive. Be very careful when you get to the home button. We don't wanna damage this home button, because if you have to replace this, it will lose the touch ID function on the device. Continue working the pick through. Once you've worked the bottom edge, we're just going to lift that up a bit so that it's loose like that. I'm not going to worry about this uh, this right hand edge over here. I'm going to skip right back to the top edge and do the same as what we just done on the bottom edge. And because of the way this is broken on here, I'm just going to use the... I'm going to sort of shimmy along so it's razor blade, alcohol, and then run the guitar pick through for the length of the razor blade. And the same again here, razor blade, lift it up alcohol and then use the guitar pick to slide through that section same again and then hopefully we should that might be the last sort of push through that bit Which it looks good now that we've got those three edges separated we're just going to sort of lift it up like this and we're going to open it up like opening the back cover of your favourite book. Now that that's open, we're going to take it back over to the workbench to begin disassembly. Now that we're back on the workbench, I'm going to place a mug or another heavy object just behind the screen to stop that screen from falling over and breaking any flex cables, most importantly the Touch ID flex cable. And then we're going to use a crosshead screwdriver to remove the four screws that hold down the LCD in each corner of the LCD. The third one is just hiding under that black tape. And the fourth one is hiding under this bit of broken glass what's still stuck to the LCD. It'd be a good time to remove this so that it's not in our way. With all four of those removed, we're going to remove the LCD next. This piece of glass is going to be in the way. And the way that we remove this, I'm going to get some tweezers. I'm just going to carefully lift up the LCD in each corner because it is glued down the top left and then the top right corner I'm just going to sort of pry upwards to lift it and separate it from the glue and then we're going to get the f our fingers underneath it and lift it up and then this one separates from the top down just like that now at this point you need some dexterity to hold the lcd with one hand and then we're going to take the screw out of the battery connector with the other hand also while holding it down at the same time and the purpose of removing this screw is to isolate power from the device. Then we're going to use a plastic pick to separate the battery from the logic board, just like that. Whilst keeping hold of the LCD, we're going to move down here 
and remove the three crosshead screws that hold down this shield. Just make sure that you do this step after isolating the power. And once the three screws are removed, we're gonna go underneath with a plastic spudger to disconnect the LCD. On the sixth gen, the LCD always sticks to this shield. So just take it out all in one and put the LCD to one side now for reinstallation later. We can use the plastic spudger again now to disconnect the two digitizer connectors. And then I'm gonna use some tweezers to lift up this zip connector and then pull out this flex cable so that we can separate it from the chassis, allowing us to finally remove the glass and digitizer from this iPad. Don't discard this just yet because we still need to remove the home button and touch ID. But for now, we're gonna concentrate on cleaning up this chassis. The easiest way to clean up these chassis is to use a number 17 X-Acto blade. And we're just gonna make like a chisely sort of pushing action like this to separate all the old adhesive away from the edge. Any glass what's remained, we can remove that now. And also be careful in this bottom area around these Wi-Fi antennas because you don't want to damage them. Now that the chassis is cleaned up, we're going to take some acetone at this point on a microfiber cloth. If you're doing this as a DIY repair, you might not have acetone just lying around, but nail polish remover will work just as well. I've even seen people use lighter fluid to use to remove the glue too. The most important part is to make sure that we've got a really clean edge for the new screen to stick to. The additional step is to, to apply some tape primer as well. We just use a cotton bud to apply this. It just helps the new screen to stick down as best as possible to the to the chassis. And it's just it just fills in any microscopic dents and stuff in, in the in the chassis. It's available in a couple of brands. I prefer the 3M one. It's a little bit thinner and goes a little bit further. Whereas I know that a lot of people use a Tessa one. We can put the chassis to one side now and we're gonna get the broken screen and we're gonna remove this home button safely without causing any damage to it. I'm gonna use a heat gun to remove this and I'm applying heat at 200 degrees C and I'm just gonna circle around it to get it nice and warm. And then using our number 17 X-Acto blade, I'm gonna lift up that part of the bracket, then this side of the bracket, and then I'm gonna use the tweezers to pull that away and separate that. Then I'm gonna do the same again getting right underneath the home button this side, this time, and, and then separating away from the device. We can also peel up, it should all be warm now, we can peel up the flex cable at this point. And separate it all, just like that. You can see as well that the rubber gasket came away whilst we were doing that. I'll explain how to reinstall that gasket in a second. Right, now that that home button is removed, as you can see, we did lose the rubber gasket. The screens that we're using for this repair are the Repair Pro displays or digitizers from ReplaceBase. And you can see that these actually come with the little plastic yeah. gasket attached to the display. And also in this packet, you get the rubber gasket as well. So we're gonna replace that too. So like I say, these little rubber rings we can peel off the back adhesive there now we're just going to push this through just like that and then sort of bring it back of itself and get as close to center as we possibly can these can be fiddly i'm going to be straight with you really awkward but once they're lined up like that and now that we've got that rubber gasket on there, we can just drop that into place and apply pressure around the edges to make sure they stuck down. Same with this flex cable, just push it down with your thumb. And then I, I don't recommend using these. I know they've got the adhesive on them and stuff, but that, that adhesive is usually absolute garbage um, and it just, it just doesn't stick as well. It's not very good. So I always stick a new piece of adhesive onto the original button making sure that we scrape off all the old adhesive first. So now we can stick this back on. These displays have little guides on them showing exactly where to place that. 
just apply pressure, make sure that it's stuck down nice and solid. And then I'm gonna use a UV curing glue around the edges here, making sure we've applied it liberally around the edge of this, just like the originals. And then I like to be as quick as I possibly can because I've found that that, uh, that UV curing glue has a tendency to soak under the Tessa tape and cause problems. So you have to just be fast with this before it soaks into the adhesive. Once that's cured, this screen is now ready to reinstall onto the iPad. Now we're going to offer up the FPC connector or the digitizer connector. We're going to make sure that it sits exactly where we want it to before we apply pressure. Once that one's connected, the other one should line up pretty easy because we've already got one to guide it in. But I'm going to make a meal out of it anyway. And then we get that click knowing that it's gone in. I'm going to stick our mug behind it again. And now we're going to use the tweezers to help guide the home button connector or cable into place. And now we're going to offer up the LCD connector and reconnect that. We can now reinstall the three screws that hold down that shield. Make sure that they're nice and tight, holding the shield in place. With those three installed, we can now re the battery connector. Make sure that you secure it down with the screw. And then just for good measure, I always just push down on the connector like that, just before I screw it down. Because sometimes this can get a little bent when you plug when you push the guitar pick under there. So just make sure that it gets pushed down properly like that. Place the LCD back into position and secure down the four screws or one crosshead screw in each corner. Now we're gonna get a clean room wipe and make sure that all the dust, fingerprints and everything else that's on the LCD is removed because we want it as clean as possible. Remember, once this is sealed up, it's sealed up forever. You don't want to be removing that because you're just gonna, it's probably gonna make it worse. If you've got fingerprints on this LCD, use a little bit of acetone to clean it up. But you want to avoid getting any fingerprints on it from the start anyway. This is a top tip for doing iPads. Remove the adhesive from the top the adhesive on the right hand edge and then the adhesive on the bottom of the digitizer but I'm going to leave the adhesive on this right hand edge after that I'm going to peel off this backing sheet make sure that you do this because you know like I said once it's sealed it's sealed and if you forget that you're going to be really kicking yourself finally I'm going to get one fresh clean room wipe and I'm going to give it one last wiping off before finally closing this up, making sure that it sticks on this left hand edge of the iPad first. Then we can push it down there. Then I'm going to stand it up on its edge like that. And this is the point that I'm going to remove this last piece of adhesive using some tweezers. I'm just going to pull that out and make sure that it sticks down. The reason I do this is that I find see those cables here they can sometimes stick to that adhesive so if you leave them to last you're not gonna have that problem and you get a really good seal check that your home button works it's a good idea to do that before I just forgot but we got a good click there sounds feels like original and then we can turn the device back on and test functionality of course I've got a plastic film on the screen I'm gonna leave that on until I give it back to the customer but that's why it looks scratched underneath it it's so clean, it's so nice, it's really fresh. If you're doing this for customers as well, just make sure that you clean it up before you hand it back to them. Nothing screams unprofessional like dirty iPads. Even if even if you get it and it's covered, it's like kids' iPad and it's covered in jam and cheese and toast, just make sure that you clean it up afterwards. Anyway, a quick way to test it is to press and hold the power button. And as long as it doesn't drop that slider up there, you will be all good. So touch is good, this is ready to go back. Thank you for watching, see you next time.